So this diagram, this uh, PowerPoint is the simplified illustration of the pivotal role of adolescent in the epidemiology of this meningococcal disease compared to the other pathogens. Like you can see in this slide, there is a Neisseria meningitis, Streptococcus pneumonia, Haemophilus inclusive. These are three invasive diseases where the pattern is slightly different. If you see the upper column, the Neisseria meningitis, the red, red means the, where there is a significant pattern and the higher yellow is the from low to the high, where there is a likelihood of carriage of the pathogen. So in there, you can see that the adolescent age group, these are the very much important and they are there to spread the uh, disease to the other age group persons. So the frequency of interaction between the adolescent and other specific age group may depend on the factors, including their cultures and social norms. So these figures tells you the potential of the adolescent to transmit to the all contacts, regardless of the age. So very important thing, the age on incidence and carries, the prevention of invasive PG in infants is a very much important due to the many factors. The most important is that more than 75% of the cases are noted in children less than five years of age. While IMD is commonly noted in young children, adolescent and young adults. Children are highly vulnerable. Why? There are many causes related with that. One is the relative immaturity of the immune system, particularly to the under-responsiveness to pure polysaccharide antigen of Neisseria meningitis. Secondly, the immaturity of alternate and lactin complement pathway, in particular young children. And third is the antibody level, the level of serum antibody, you can say bactericidal antibody, SPA. This is highest at the birth and among adults, but the lowest in the children between six months and two years of age, when the highest incidence of disease occurs. So further, the classical symptoms of IMD are less common in infants due to this region and younger children. Hence, the diagnosis can be a challenging in this age group. Now, after this epidemiology patterns of the disease and its uh, spread, now comes to the disease proper, means pathophysiology of the disease. So, understanding the mode of transmission is important to prevent the spread. Neisseria meningitis is a human host restricted pathogen. I told you that it only infects the human. So, means that the only natural reservoir of this bacterium is the oropharyngeal oropharynx of the human. So by this way, oropharyngeal carriage of this bacteria in a otherwise healthy humans. And this estimated carriage rate is between 0.6% to as high as 34%. And this diagram, this figure may be uh, higher in adolescent, young adults, and in individual living in an overcrowded or confined spaces. This disease is transmitted by droplets from the respiratory tract. Infected individuals can transmit the bacteria up to 24 hours after the initiation of antibiotic treatment. So still after taking antibiotics, they are infected and they can very well spread to the susceptibility. Although colonization occurs in more than 10% of adults, but rates are as high as 42% have been observed among the adolescent and young adults due to their social behavior of this population like intimation, kissing, smoking, alcohol consumption, and this predisposes them to the transmission of bacteria infection among each other. Now come to the clinical picture. Let us know more about the clinical picture and assess to the factors for the, our concern. The clinical feature of IMD can vary greatly based on the extent of the host inflammatory factors, such as activation of the immune system and host inflammatory response. The common characteristic features of IMD includes fever, headache, photophobia, neck stiffness, and altered mental status. In case of fulminant progression of the disease, multi-organ failure and death can occur within just a few hours. And a mortality rate of 10% has been reported even when early diagnosis and appropriate management is initiated rapidly. And thirdly, the long-term sequelae is also noted in up to 30% of the cases and can include the neurological impairment, deafness, amputation of limbs or digits due to gangrene or skin scarring. This is a very important slide. One must concentrate on the fact that this is the time duration, time holds, and 
according to that, we know the early symptoms of invasive disease appears just like a flu-like symptom. It just resembles the flu, like irritability, fever, loss of appetite, and it tends to be non-specific, which confirms the definitive diagnosis. It's very difficult to diagnose that some particular symptoms is having harboring many cococci. And characteristic, or you can say the telltale symptoms of this meningococcal disease manifest approximately 12 hours after the initial presentation. However, this often leaves the insufficient time for the proper treatment, and death can occur as rapidly as within the 24 to 48 hours of the disease onset. And this schematic depicts a typical time course for meningococcal meningococcemia and meningitis, and is based on the study of approximately 500 children less than 16 years of age with invasive meningococcal disease. Most of them are presented with a non-specific symptom in the first four to eight hours. But many were near death within the 24 hours. So you can imagine how fast the spread of this disease is happening. Hospitalization occurred in a median of 19 hours after onset of symptom and ranges from the 13 hours in children less than one year to 22 hours in the 15 to 16 years of age. So you can imagine the how quickly response is required. And there are certain unique features of the meningococcal disease pathology, like which is distinct from the other gram-negative bacteria in many respects. Like I told you, it's a rapidly progressive cutaneous hemorrhage there. The skin hemorrhage is very rapidly progressive. And that causes the skin necrosis. Disease associated with disseminated intravascular coagulation and shock. And some factors are there which cause to the overwhelming disease, like there is a rapid doubling time of the bacteria. So bacteria is very rapidly uh, uh, doubling or tripling, and their propensity to release the endotoxin. So each time the bacteria replicates, so there is a huge amount of endotoxin released, and that causes the inflammatory or other reaction, immune reaction. Some endotoxin, usually in the form of like oligosaccharide, is the most potent toxic mo molecules, and its level in the circulation correlates directly with the severity of disease and the mortality rates. You can see clinical menstruation. Some clinical menstruation manifestation has great significance as skin rashes. Usually there is a petechi developed in 50 to 80 percent of the patient, and this confluence to a confluence of these lesions results in the hemorrhagic patches, often with the central necrosis and rapidly evolving potential or peripheric rash is a sign of very severe disease. So when we encounter such type of manifestation, we consider as a very severe disease. Second is the shock. And one entity is called purpura fulminans. What is this? It's, uh, when these critically ill patients having many vocal sepsis, they may rapidly develop progressively petechi, echimosis, and extensively purpura, accompanied by DIC and vascular collapse, and ultimately leading to multi-organ failure with high mortality morbidity. And some clinical manifestations of this are also like water house medicine syndrome, here, there is a massive bleeding into the one or both adrenal glands. These are characteristic of meningococcemia, which leads to multi-organ failure, coma, refractive shock, DIC, with widespread purpura leading to adrenocortical insufficiency. And third, very common is meningitis, having the classical signs of neck pain and other Budzinski signs, extremely photophobia is there, irritability. There is a focal or diffuse neurological deficit, sometimes seizure and coma. But there are certain red flag signs which have to look after and have to be <coughs> keep in mind. <coughs> if this is present, we anticipate that the fast progression and severity of digit and where the aim is to look out for these key early symptoms, which is if recognized at the earliest stage, could bring the about earlier treatment and improve outcome like extreme irritability and lethargy. If someone having that, all the suspect of that. Any signs of breathing difficulty, cold, calm, hand and feet, pale and mortal skin, fast heart rate with prolonged capillary filling time, and non blanching rash with potential in perpeda. These are called as the red flag signs of meningococcal disease. There are certain diagnostic limitations because there are several concerns related to the diagnostic limitation, and they are mainly due to the varied presentation and quick progression of the disorder. These limitations are that, like the clinical picture is often non-specific, as I have told you, during the early stage, and is often confused with the common viral illness. About 20% of the children with IMD do not develop the rash. So rash is not the characteristic. 20% may not develop the rash, or any non-specific macropapular rash or purpura. In many cases, the appearance of classical symptoms may be delayed until the disease is well advanced. So this is the diagnostic data. 
Thirdly, the condition is often misdiagnosed as many clinicians would have rarely seen because we clinicians have rarely seen this permanent cases. So they do not think of that. This can be a fatal for the children as infection can progress rapidly, resulting in death within the few hours. And this rapidly proceed is very difficult to diagnose because death is can occur in as little as 24 hours. In a study in Aligarh Muslim University, the case fatality rate was 16%. And 28 of 40 death occurs within the first 24 hours of admission. So younger the child, the faster disease progression, like less than one year, it is 13 hours. As age advances, the gap is slightly programmed. And it is able to, that I say, the flu-like symptoms is uh, very uh, difficult to say that someone is having the meningococcal disease. It is a fast disease organism, very difficult to isolate. It is very commonly susceptible to antibiotics and temperature. So if someone has started antibiotic, the sign and symptoms may be masked. And these are the regions. The regions sufficiently have the confidence or causes to, there is a critical need for the diagnosis so as early as possible to prevent the mortality. So the, what is the consequence? If not taken in the time, the 5 to 10 percent of the infected persons have been reported to die within 24 to 48 hours. And another matter of concern is the finding that the largest number of deaths is due to IMD often occurs in younger than five years of age. The longer term sequel, long term sequelae of the IMD can be categorized in various forms like physical sequelae, neurological, and psychological and behavioral sequelae. Physical sequelae are in the form of uh, sometimes the amputation and skin scarring. Others are limb deficiency or deformity, skin disease, renal failure, insufficiency, renal insufficiency, and cardiovascular condition. Neurological sequelae may be hearing loss, seizures, cognitive problem with consequences for the academic achievement in the latter state, some motor deficit and visual impairment. impairment. Then psychological and behavior sequelae reported include the post-traumatic stress syndrome, symptoms, anxiety disorders, behavioral disorders, depression, eating disorders and attention deficit hyperactive disorder. So if by the grace of God or timely intervention, if someone has recovered also, then still there is a chance of sequelae. And that is one of the reasons that we have to be very concerned about the uh, prevention of sequelae.